The people said they missed it when I used to walk around in downtown Toronto and autistically rant about anime in public. And I obviously can't do that anymore, but we're going to have to settle for like a nice part of Winnipeg and I'm going to walk around here and autistically rant about anime in public. Because I, I always want to give the people what they want. So, today we're going to talk about the most recent relevant movie I think I've discussed in a while. I mean, I've done a review of Oppenheimer, Barbie, Sound of Freedom. But we're going to talk about a real man's movie today. We're going to talk about a real blockbuster that forever changed the face of cinema. And I am, of course, referring to Digimon the movie, Our War Game. Now, Digimon was a huge thing back in the 1990s and early 2000s, if I remember correctly. I was obviously a big fan. Loved uh, Adventure, Adventure 2, Tamers. Tamers was actually something I watched the whole series of in university, and I was, like, shocked by how good it was. Been rewatching a couple episodes of it. Still holds up very well. But, so Digimon Season 1 and Season 2 were out. They were really hyped about it, and Hollywood was like, or whoever was like, we need to cash in on this. Let's make a film. But unlike Pokemon the movie or Pokemon 2000, which I'll also have to do a review of, um, they didn't have a full feature movie. So they said, okay, we're going to take like three or four sh shorter movies and an Angela and a Conda skit for some reason, and we're going to edit them together and pretend it's a coherent narrative uh, that flows properly. Makes sense, I suppose. We'll make it just long enough that we can squeeze it into theaters and get that sweet, sweet ticket revenue. That's why they released Digimon the movie, which composed a couple different parts. So we're not going to talk about the movie as a whole. We're going to talk about the, I think it's second segment, well, third if you count the Angela and Anaconda skit, our war game. Now, I hadn't realized that I needed a Digimon War Games crossover film, but I kind of dig the, um, the, the anime crossover, the literal anime crossover. I think we need more, like, 1970s and 80s action movies <laughs> crossed over with 90s anime. So we can have, like, Monster Rancher Bullet, um, Dirty Harry meets Pokemon, and Fighting Foodons meets the Terminator. And I think that would make my life complete, and I could die a happy man. But, our war game, does it hold up? I have very fun movies of it as a kid. I've been kind of into Digimon a bit lately because Digimon Survive came out. And I was like, you know what? I've never played a Digimon game on a, a console. You have a Digimon horror-themed uh, light novel slash um, tactical RPG. That sounds kind of interesting. So I started that and it hasn't been too bad. And I thought to myself, you know, I haven't watched um, the movie in a, like since I was 10. Maybe, maybe it's held up. Maybe it's worse than I remembered. So I fired up my war game or our war game and watched it and i'm gonna say you know what i think it holds up i didn't see too many anime movies at that age but i remember thinking this one was good and i remember thinking pokemon 2000 was good and i think kind of our war game is everything an anime movie should be one of my issues with a lot of anime movies is like half the film is just recap you have crap like Death and Rebirth where they just edit a bunch of episodes together and present this incoherent clip show. Then you have stuff like The Goblin King's Crown, which was 50% rehash of just summarizing the series and like 50% mediocre two episodes edited together. Sometimes the movie is just like a long episode, but generally speaking, I, I don't like the movies um, a lot of these shows produce. But I think our war game is is what a movie, an anime movie, should be. There's not much in the way of recap from the series. You just kind of jump right into the action. And you deliver on everything that people liked from the show. And this thing has everything that you like from the show. You have the banter, the random pop culture references, the cringy 1990s pop music, the, um, the same characters. You have Digimon blowing each other up. You have, like, a, a race to save the world. And it delivered on all of that. Unlike something like The Killing of a Sacred Deer, in which they did not kill, kill a sacred deer in the film, 
This movie didn't lie to me. It promised me Digimon the movie, and I got Digimon the movie. So what is the plot to our war game? So we see the emergence of Diaboramon, who begins to take over the entire internet. Uh, he was a Digimon who merged with a computer virus or something to that effect. And he's begun to take over the whole world. Um, Izzy and Ty team up. I always liked Izzy, because Izzy just seemed to do everything of any value that wasn't combat related in the team. Like, he would always fix everything just by hacking on his computer. Uh, Ty would normally do the fighting, and Izzy would do it. And I like the kind of bromance you got on there. It's like the lad's enmity. You have, like, Ty, who's kind of like a young Chad. And Izzy, who's kind of like the young nerd virgin. But they get along, and he's like his confident number two. Matt was always more of kind of a Sigma male, and he was outside of the sociosexual hierarchy of the group. Joe was the Delta male, but Izzy was like the Gamma Omega male, who was Ty's second in command. So I like those two characters. It was a good choice to put them both as the main characters of this movie. All of the other characters make a appearance. So they're just hanging out together, and they find Diaboramon's trying to take over the world, of course, to use that cringy reference, and they decide to try to get him. So they start trying to hack him, and he hacks him back, and they find a way to upload Agumon and Tentamon to the internet, and they have a face-off against Diaboramon, and Diaboramon's way too powerful. And, um... Diaboramon starts setting, shutting down the global communication infrastructure. And it is kind of cool to see all this stuff from the, the 2000s. Like back when the internet was just becoming a thing. Like when you had the old, like seeing the old email, the old browser, dial up, all those kind of fun things. It's very nostalgic. I also think it kind of predicted in a way some like modern cyber attacks, if we can say that and how that can shut down an entire country and an entire economy so they're basically then they try to get like the rest of the team uh, Mimi's on a vacation to Hawaii Sora's mad at Ty because Ty got her a hairpin and Sora's like you don't like my hairstyle and Ty's like uh, I don't I wouldn't know because you're always wearing a hat so she got mad at him and she kind of decides that her beef with Ty is more important than saving the world so she basically fucks off for this movie. Joe is writing his medical school entrance exam. Um, and Matt and TK are at their grandma's. And they eventually manage to get in touch with Matt and TK. And they upload their Digimon using the only computer in, like, the um, rural Japanese town they're in. And we have our heroes facing off against Diaboramon. Now, Diaboramon is able to hack the, a military satellite... Um, because Izzy hacks the military satellite to use it to try to communicate with people outside of the normal uh, methods of communication. So in typical Japanese fashion, Diaboramon hacks the military servers and launches nuclear weapons. Um, one at Colorado to try to kill Wallace, who I think was his trainer, and the other at Tokyo to try to wipe out um, Izzy and Tai. So, anytime you have nuclear weapons in Japan, that's already pretty edgy, because it's, it's a sore topic for obvious reasons. And so, like, like as in our war game, it becomes a... Sorry, in war games, it becomes a race against time, where they're trying to stop Diaboramon and deactivate the missiles before Japan gets nuked and Diaboramon takes over the world. Unfortunately, what winds up happening is... This is the 2000s, so everybody's on MSN and AOL and using their shitty dial-up. So they all just start mass sending them emails. And this causes a huge amount of lag. And uh, Metal Gurumon and War Greymon are getting their asses kicked because they're slowed down. Now, we have like a, a kind of a moment, sort of like in Sonic Adventure 2, where Maria says to shadow like all the voices of all the people on the planet. And um, Ty says this to War Greymon. He's like, do you feel all the kids who are crying out for salvation? And he's like, I feel them. So um, 
or Greymon and Metal Garurumon fuse Digivolve into Omnimon, who's pretty cool. Um, Omnimon's a cool name. He looks cool. He's a pretty even fusion of the two of them. It's a fun, it's a fun thing to have happen. It's kind of perfect for a movie. In a movie, you always want to up the stakes a little bit. And we have nuclear weapons and we have, um, we have Omnimon. So they wind up beating Diaboramon by forwarding him all the emails they're getting. And that causes massive lag with him. And then they're able to kill him. So they defeat the, like, the ultimate internet hacker by just spamming his inbox. Which I think is pretty funny. And uh, that's kind of the movie. And it just ends. And it's nice. There's no filler. There's no shitty recap. There's lots of good banter. Lots of pop culture references. We have Ty's mother who is pretty funny. Cause she makes like beef jerky um, smoothies. And she's like, I'm going to make a cake. And she's like, it's the first time I've made a cake using flour. And then she cooks it in the microwave. And you just have all this like... <laughs> insane banter involving her uh and the other characters and just overall i think it's a really good quality digimon movie the art style is kind of interesting i like that they tried something a bit different and i don't know how you describe it but the art style is very different from the tv show but you know what i think it works i think they were able to produce a decent quality um digimon movie that delivers on the series that's kind of a worthy side story sequel so should you check this out in 2023 yeah i think it's worth a check out it's if you watched it as a kid i definitely give it another watch i actually think it's pretty good um it's better than most anime movies i've seen like i said the other one that's based on a series and is not a standalone that i would kind of compare this to is maybe pokemon 2000 which I thought was actually pretty good, but uh, this one stacks up. So that was my artistic anime rant in public about Digimon, our war game. God bless everybody and lots more content to come.